John Watkins started teaching economics at Westminster as an adjunct in 1981. His research interests lie in understanding corporate power, particularly as it applies to the evolution of consumer capitalism. His purpose in teaching is to raise the student's level of confusion, a goal towards which he continues to aspire with moderate success. A warm welcome for John Watkins. Well, thank you very much. We have seen the enemy, and the enemy is us. Our addiction to fossil fuels, our culture of mindless consumption, our commitment to growth at any price. At the end of World War II, only half the households in the country had automobiles, virtually no one had a television set, and the interstate system had yet to be built. Today, most households have two or more cars, 97% of them have television sets, and the interstate, once touted as a solution to our transportation woes, seems woefully inadequate. As Americans, we like growth, but growth is an anomaly in the time span of the human species, and the age of growth may well be followed by the age of decline. The trends are ominous. Scientists have established a causal relationship between carbon dioxide levels and rising temperatures. There is a third more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than at any time in the past 800,000 years. Half of the carbon dioxide emitted by burning fossil fuels has been emitted in the past 30 years. 85% has been emitted since World War II. We have emitted 765 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere since the Earth's summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. The Earth is a half degree centigrade warmer than in the 1990s. The Arctic is warm more than three degrees centigrade. In the past, when carbon dioxide matched current levels, forests grew in Antarctica and the seas were 60 feet higher. From an economic point of view, climate change is an economic bad. The harm it does to me does not reduce the harm to you. From an individual point of view, efforts to mitigate climate change appear inconsequential. Multiplied by 100 million or even a billion fold, our efforts have consequences. To address this issue, however, will take a collective effort. We make our history, but we make it based on conditions inherited from the past. Our technology, our system of laws, our manner of living are handed to us from past generations. The dead hand of the past has reached out from the grave to determine the path we are on, and that path is unsustainable. The path is premised that maximizing profits benefits everyone. In pursuit of profit, we burn fossil fuels to make more stuff, to sell to more people, using the earned profits to burn more fuels, clear more forests, make more stuff. We have become like God, recreating the world in our image. To paraphrase Joni Mitchell, we paved paradise to set up a parking lot all made possible from the processed remains of dead organisms living millions of years ago, all resting on the assumption that we can do what we damn well please. We realize now that there are un unintended consequences to Adam Smith's invisible hand. Each individual pursuing his or her self-interest does not necessarily promote the interest of all. The invisible hand needs visible guidance. I am dismayed by those who deny that human activity causes climate change, most of whom seem to be in leadership positions. <laughs> their dream of untold profits has impaired their intellect, diminished their powers of observation, and debased their ethics. Anyone who has opened a car door on a sunny day has experienced the greenhouse effect. The empirical data covering thousands of years is conclusive. The Earth is warming. 
the naysayers present themselves as rational, generally conservative people. They are anything but. They are reckless, akin to hoodlums driving 100 miles per hour down the highway, inebriated, seatbelts unfastened, no insurance, <laughs> all the while talking on their cell phones, complaining about regulations that impede their freedom. A rational person would slow down, sober up, set aside his cell phone, and buy insurance. <laughs> and while the climate change is far more serious, the metaphor informs us to take precautions, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Perhaps the naysayers can find, can find solace in a quip by Groucho Marx. Why worry about posterity? What did posterity ever do for me? I will be blunt. We need to mitigate climate change, treating it as equivalent to this country's efforts to fight World War II. During World War II, government deficits approached 30% of gross domestic product. Government spending approached 45%, most going to the war effort. We spend whatever we need to mitigate climate change. We tax those activities and products that contribute to global warming. We need to place solar panels on every roof where the sun shines. We need to end global subsidies to the fossil fuel industry amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars a year. We need to tax carbon emissions. Renewables need to be subsidized. We need to reconsider nuclear power. Bill Gates has mobilized a team of engineers with a new design for nuclear energy, a design that uses nuclear waste for fuel and liquid metal as a coolant, resistance to meltdowns from tsunamis and earthquakes. We need to eat less beef. Less beef means less methane, which means less warming. We need to partner with business requiring that they assume responsibility for their products from cradle to grave. We need to put our best minds not to develop financial derivatives and credit default swaps, which Warren Buffett referred to as financial instruments of mass destruction, but to develop innovations that will place us on a sustainable path. And we need to share our resources and technology with other nations. We can't do this alone, for we all breathe the same air. And those of us enjoying a Western lifestyle are primarily responsible for a warming planet. The poorest in the world are likely to suffer the most. We have an obligation to help them afford the changes that are necessary. And then there are the bitcoins, touted by libertarians as a way of avoiding government intrusion, <laughs> an expression of their presumed God-given right to drive down the highway at 100 miles per hour. It is less known that making bitcoins has used more energy than all the energy generated by solar panels and wind, more than produced by the country of Ireland. So how do we pay for this? It's the same way we paid for the American Revolution, the Civil War, World War I, World War II. If we can spend $4 trillion to buy U.S. Treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities enriching the rich, if we can spend $6 trillion fighting fruitless wars in the Middle East, surely we can spend that amount and more to slow and at some point, hopefully, reverse climate change. For those who respond it will be inflationary, I have two comments. First, a much greater threat of inflation will come from the millions of people moving here and elsewhere if the coastal cities flood and California continues to burn. And second, our real constraints are not financial. The real constraints are our willingness to commit our intellect, our resources, and our compassion to make the earth habitable for future generations. From a Darwinian point of view, it is a sad legacy if in the struggle for existence the human species won. For what have we won? 
an earth devoid of the diversity of life as we oversee the sixth great extinction? Are we to become like the Hindu god Shiva, the destroyer of worlds? Or will we use our collective wisdom to slow and eventually reverse climate change and, in the process, save ourselves? Thank you. Thank you.